J.T. Crowley is talking books. On the show, you'll hear from emerging talent and seasoned veterans from around the world. They'll give you their take on the writing process and how to create the secret sauce of page-turning deliciousness. Let's get into that magical mixture of the art and science of creativity. Here's J.T. Crowley, author of The Smart Kids and your podcast host. Hello, everybody. I'm J.T. Crowley, and I have to say, everyone, that I am super delighted to be talking to Linda Hockey. It's great to have her back on the show um, because this is her second interview with me. And the first one, actually, everybody, was back in, I believe, in October last year when we talked about her series then of the Hickory Docks Tale series. And here we are nine to ten months later talking about her new series, Travels with the Pack. Now, this new series that Linda has written has got two books in the series so far. Um, the first one is called Chatty, the present hen, and the second and her latest book, Desert Friends. And it's the Desert Friends book, everybody, that will probably be concentrating on predominantly in the podcast, but we will go and talk about Chatty, the pheasant hen, as well, because they are both part of the Travels with the Pack series. And the books are, they're children's books, everybody, and they're aimed at four to eight-year-olds. And when you have a look at them, the beautiful illustrations they've got in there, the, the colorful illustrations and the simple, plain stories, they're absolutely wonderful, everybody. Now, Linda, she presently lives in New Mexico, but has lived at various places across the U.S. as she's followed her husband, Mike's professional path. She lives in Boston. She's been lived in the state of Oklahoma. She has two children, Owen and Carrie, five grandchildren, and, of course, a whole host of hunting dogs because that's where the books come from. They're all about her hunting dogs the tales and the stories of their adventures, but she's just renamed them in the books. She's been a school teacher. She's been a Sunday school teacher. She's been a volunteer docent, as well as being an author, of course. Linda, I am so excited to welcome you back. And we've been chatting everybody over the last few months back and forth about her books and all sorts of rubbish, but that's what we just do. And now she's got the two books out and we're ready to go, everybody, with these new series of Travels with the Pack books. Linda, come and join me. I will. (laughs) (laughs) So, Linda, you finally moved on from the Hickory Docks Tale series, but the stories in the new series are still around the ventures of the hunting dogs. Why did you decide to keep the hunting dogs at the heart of this new series? Well, because that's what I really know a lot about, but, but, you know, the children and the hunting dogs. And these are memories of different events that have happened. I've exaggerated them. Obviously, they're fiction, but they're very important books about dogs and children and education basically, and entertainment, and they're good stories. So that's why. Oh, they're very good stories, and you have hit on it that. Yes, they are, you know, for me, they are fun, and yet the, there is an educational point to them, as you say in the stories. You now, you are talking a bit about the wildlife and the, the habits of those animals that we, you've characterized here. Right. Absolutely. Linda, can we go to Desert Friends? First, before we go to chatty, everybody. I know it's the second in the series, and common sense would say, well, we should talk about the first book in the series, chatty, but I'm a bloke. I'm going to do it the other way around. (laughs) I like that. So let's talk about chat. Let's talk about Desert Friends, because this is the bigger book and your most recent book. Plus, I understand that you feel that this book is your best. This is you at your best. So let's talk about it. Now, you've set the scene in the Sonoran Desert in Arizona. Why a desert scene? 
And how did you come up with the idea of the characters Rodney, a brown and black speckled roadrunner, and Quincy, a grey, brown Campbell's quail? Because they work so well together. So why the desert scene and why those two characters? Well, my husband has actually hunted birds in, in the desert, a lot, you know, in Arizona, New Mexico, wherever. And he's, he's done a lot of that. But the reason I, and it was different, to be quite honest with you. Chatty, I did in South Dakota in a winter scene, as you, you already said earlier. And so this one was the Sonora Desert. And, and it, had, it had all the elements that I wanted. It had a good story. A plot. It had uh, some entertainment with the animals, and it also had some of the education that you just talked about. Uh, Rodney, I I really like the idea of the birds because Rodney's taller, thinner, and he's the road runner and goes really, really, really fast. The quail, um, uh, Quincy, is shorter, fatter, and you know is a little more deliberate. And so, just as we as humans come in all sizes, shapes, colors, etc. So do animals. And animals have a lot of the same type of characteristics. And I thought that they would work well together. And they, they do. They actually do work very well along with the two hunting dogs, the German short hair pointers. And Tripod is a three-legged uh, hunting dog, but he was one of my husband's best hunting dogs, actually. He could really run and Oh, he was fabulous. And then, of course, Gator, who's, who's the four-legged one. And, and still, he has his own characteristics, so to speak. So, and that's why I picked him. Just they were very different. Rodney is, is a... Roadrunners are more individual. They're not like in a community as much. Quails actually live sort of in a community when they are sleeping they get in a round ball and their tails are facing in and their little heads are sticking out. So there was a difference right away between Rodney and between Quincy. And there were some other differences too. So that's what I'm trying to bring out along with the entertainment and the fun of it. Oh it's yeah. Cute- oh yeah. There's quite some entertainment in here, everybody. And I did love the illustration where you've got the, the quails all huddled together, you know, with their rear ends all, you know, pushed, you know, in a circle to keep him warm. And of course, you know, Quincy, she said, you know, likes to, well, Rodney, you'll be no good here because you're too skinny, you know, and that <laughs> tail will not fit in. <laughs> and because yeah, Rodney is, you know, he's a bird that's, you know, the roadrunners, they're, they they stick to themselves, don't they? Ab- well, yes, and, and also when they need to warm up, instead of being in a big old bunch, they actually, their back will face the sun and their feathers kind of spread out in the back, and then that's how they warm up. So oh, yeah, that's, you say that in the book. Yeah. Yeah, you say that in the book. Um, I have to say, uh, Linda, the illustrations done by uh, Mike Minnick are wonderful. The colours are exciting and the facial expressions on the characters are cute. (laughs) Did you and Mike find coming up with these great illustrations a real labour of love? Tell us how the drawings came to life to bring a, a magical touch to this wonderful book of yours, because that's what the illustrations do. Oh, well, thank you. And, and uh, I feel like Mike Mimic and I work very well together. He doesn't live here. He lives in Oklahoma. But when we talked, uh, you know, we would go through my manuscript first. And, that's, and I actually show children in the classroom how, how you go about doing a book. And so we, we went through the manuscript and then uh, we developed the character. He developed the characters from my characters. In other words, the drawing, so to speak. And he made them. Oh, I love it. The one, and I wish you could show it. Uh, the one in which the shadow is over Quincy and Rodney and the way their eyes are kind of bugged out. Mike really brings the characters to life because he has a labor of love just like I do. 
and um, he's a wonderful, wonderful illustrator with it. So. Oh, I think, you know, it's, it's, the illustrations are fantastic. You know, I, I looked at them, you know, and you've got a, for me, I love the one of where you've got Gator and who is, you know, crashed into the, um, <laughs> you know, into the spines. And, you know, there you've got him, you know, in the illustration with the spines all on his right bottom, should I say, <laughs> looking a bit sad for himself. And then you've got, you know, you've got Tripod, you know, who I think it's wonderful how, how he's drawn, you know, the, the picture of him coming down, the, the water gushing down, and he's trying to get out of the... Um, this, you know, gushing water, and with great difficulty. And then, of course, you've got some of the, and Gator is there, you know, helping him out by grabbing him by the collar and pulling him out. I love that caption. I think Mike did a great job. The Aurorias, the Aurorias in the, in the, in the canyons, so to speak, in the desert or the little creek bed, so to speak, they really can get lots mammoth water all at one time, and it comes really rushing. And it's exactly like that with the mud coming down and then tripod got caught in the water. And, and as you said, Gator helps him get out, but Rodney and Quincy, you know, are running right along with it, trying to help save uh, tripod also. So, you know, I, I think what he did with that was absolutely fabulous. He is a great, great illustrator. He really is. Oh yeah. And I love it. Yes. When you've got, um, you know, uh, Rodney and Quincy, you know, going along at their own paces along the bank there, along the side where the bonus had the water. It's absolutely wonderful. Um, now, apart from, yes, you know, we've got Rodney, Quincy, and you've already said that we have uh, got the two dogs. And they, again, are two important characters in this book, everybody. And, yeah, you've got Tripod and you've got Gator. And I know you've marginally touched upon this, but Tripod was one of, you know, he's, he's a dog with three legs. And he was one of your, you know, as you said, your husband's dogs. And then Gator. Now, for me, he's kind of a fun dog. And, of course, dogs, you know, these um, German shorthead pointer hunters, they're very important in your life, and that's why they're in the books. Why did you pick? Was Tripod and Gator, those two dogs, you know, when they were, you know, in your life, were they great friends, the two of them? And that's why you put the two of them together. Oh, I, yes, basically, that, that's a good point. Um, they were friends, and they're opposite. They're, they're very, very different. Tripod is the one that in the house, he would grab one of my books or my husband's hunting books. He would actually tear the binding off of the side of the book. And so I always... I've got him in another book and he, and he calls it a, a shorthand way of, of learning about hunting is what he calls it because he said he claims, you know, he's been reading, so to speak, from the binding of the book. And, and Gator was just not like that. I mean, Gator didn't do those kind of things, but Tripod did. Tripod was the one that might get him in a little bit of trouble and Gator would have to help him out. So, you know, <laughs> they did yeah, and that's why you put Tripod in the, the rushing water and Gator coming to his rescue, didn't you? Right, absolutely, absolutely right. Yeah, so there you go. You see, everybody, the stories are based on Linda's uh, dogs, what she saw, what she witnessed, and the fun that she's had with her dogs, because she's had dogs all her life, herself and her husband, Mike, they've had dogs all their lives. And these are the stories that she's just taken from her dogs, put them in a book, given them a character in children's stories. And she's telling the story of what they get up to. And, and so that kids aged four to eight can look at the books and have a laugh, love this illustrations, and learn a little bit as well about writing and, uh, you know, what the wildlife of these places. For me, Linda, this is a fun book. But yes, at the same time, as you said already, you are teaching kids what these animals are about. 
their so-called you know, function you know, in the world. This is 